Few automotive brands are as legendary and recognizable as Mustang. Whether you're a diehard enthusiast or just a casual observer, you already know that that little pony on the grill stands for attainable, affordable American sportiness. But not even legends are immune to change, and Ford knows that the 2024 Mustang needs to infuse new levels of technology and customizability to attract a younger generation to become diehard enthusiasts of this car. At the same time though, it can't abandon the core traits that have made the Mustang an American institution for almost 60 years. Well, I'm out here driving the platonic ideal of a Mustang. Five liter V8 up front, six speed manual transmission in the middle and rear wheel drive with a drop top roof to let a little sunshine in. And what I wanna know is how well does the new Mustang balance old and new? For the full Mustang story, you can check out our first drive in the video description. And while you're here, please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel. You can also find us on all of your favorite social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads, and interact with us there to let us know how we're doing. But for now, let's go for a spin. So as I'm sure each and every one of you follows the Motor One social media accounts on all of the different platforms, you probably saw that we got our first taste of the 2024 Mustang in EcoBoost form yesterday. Well, today we are driving Big Daddy, the five liter GT. This particular car I'm driving is a GT convertible with the premium package. So that means it gets leather seats and a big screen and everything that you want in terms of luxury features. But it also has the GT performance package, which brings stiffer dampers, a limited slip rear differential and an incredible braking package comprising six piston front and four piston rear Brembo calipers. But as much fun as it is to say whoa to a horsey, it's a lot more fun to say giddy up, which is why the Mustang with the performance package comes with a five liter V8 making 486 horsepower. And in this particular vehicle, it's paired to an automatic rev matching six speed manual transmission, which makes it, oh, sorry, which makes it a whole lot of fun. Holy smokes. <laughs> If you don't get the performance package with the live valve exhaust, you're limited to 480 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. So while there isn't really a numbers-based reason to get the performance package, I think it's worth it based on how it makes the Mustang GT sound. I've been saying all day long, I mean, I, I like to think that I'm kind of a sports car kind of guy. My personal car is a Z4, so I kind of like that two-seater, lightweight, small, sporty feel. But every time I've been driving this thing, every time my co-driver, Peter Nelson from The Drive, has been driving this thing, I just keep on thinking, God help me, I love a Mustang. This is just too much fun to push quickly. Now, in spite of the Mustang being a big rear wheel drive VA powered six speed manual coupe, it's actually pretty approachable and easy to drive quickly. That's because it has a ton of drive modes with lots of different levels of stability intervention that allow you to have a little bit of fun, even with the tail sticking out just a tiny bit, without completely letting you lose control and spin it into a tree. However, there is one big driving enjoyment exception to that rule. The front end of this car just feels a little aloof and disconnected from the road. That starts with very numb, very light steering that just doesn't build up in feedback the harder you push it through a corner. So you really have no idea besides the G-forces at work of knowing what's going on underneath the front tires. The other issue is the front of the car feels just a little bit under damp so that when you encounter a mid-corner bump when you're pushing hard, you can kind of feel it bobbing around and that weight loading and unloading just removes any ounce of confidence you have that the front end is gonna maintain grip. I'm not sure if that problem's convertible specific, but I will say that this structure feels really rigid and robust, so I'm not sure that they need to tune the steering or the suspension super different just because it doesn't have a roof. Now I will cop to one thing. I haven't actually driven a previous generation Mustang with the V8 and the manual transmission. So this is kind of a new experience for me. And I really do like the way that the gearbox and the engine play together. I think the transmission shifts really well and it feels really positive. This great mechanical feeling shift action. And apparently that's something that's new to the Mustang. My co-driver who has been behind the wheel of stick shifted Mustangs from the previous generation says that this new gearbox is much more positive and enjoyable to use than the old one, which kind of felt a little bit rubbery and vague. Unfortunately, however, you can only get the manual transmission with the V8. So if you want some cheap DIY thrills, you're out of luck. The 2024 Mustang has an all new design, but you might not notice it first because the changes are a little bit more detail oriented. For starters, there are new tri-element LED headlamps on every single model that of course harken back to the three-element taillights 
that have been a fixture of every Mustang since the beginning. The front of the car also slopes down much more aggressively to a very sharp and very pointed prow. The roof line of the Fastback has also been altered to reduce wind resistance. In fact, this is the most aerodynamic Mustang of all time. There are also some detail changes going from EcoBoost to GT. The V8 model, for example, has these vertical struts in the grill that give it a sort of king of the road appearance. And then there are also larger ducts on the front ends to accommodate optional brake coolers. Recognizing that Mustang owners love to customize their cars, Ford offers its pony with 12 different wheel designs. One thing that's consistent across the entire lineup is this very sharp, aggressive lip spoiler on the back. One of the unintended consequences of this appearance is that there's a shadow being cast on the rear of the car, and that helps the car look lower and wider. There's lots of interesting cues that help this car look futuristic while also feeling like an avowed member of the Mustang family at least until you get inside. The interior is undoubtedly more futuristic than any Mustang in history. With a big 12.3 inch instrument cluster and 13.2 inch touchscreen occupying this monolith style tablet display on the front. But this is the first Mustang since 1994 to not have that cool twin brow, twin cowl design for the driver and front passenger. For me though, I think it's kind of a bummer. I think Ford missed an opportunity to blend old with new to give this car some cool heritage design inside while still integrating all of that customizability and connectivity. Now, in spite of that ideological disagreement, the infotainment package in this car is really something else. First of all, the gauge cluster is extensively reconfigurable. Every single drive mode gets its own design and they're all actually genuinely useful. For example, if you're in track mode, you get this big bar graph tachometer that keeps the red line dead center right in front of you so that you know exactly when you need to shift. But of course, my favorite view is the 87 to 93 Fox body gauge cluster, which gives you two big round dials with a simulated green backlighting to recall Fords of the 80s and 90s. It's just a really cool way of calling back to the past, even though you're missing out on that twin cowl design. As we learned with the Maverick and Bronco Sport, Ford is the king of making inexpensive materials look and feel really impressive. My favorite part of this entire Mustang interior is this carbon weave that you get spanning the dashboard and extending onto the door panels a little bit. But when you look closer and kind of wrap your fingernails on it, you can actually tell that it's black plastic. There's nothing carbon about this. And while some people might be tempted to complain about the use of plastic in this cabin, I think it's great because let's be honest, no one needs carbon fiber trim in their volume special Mustang GT. And so this is a great way of reducing costs while still giving you something interesting to look at and interact with. The Mustang also gets a flat bottom steering wheel with a nice chunky set of thumb rests so you can really maintain control over the car. Although I am a little bit sad that the circular airbag cover is gone because that was just another one of those features that made the Mustang feel like a little bit retro and a little bit vintage. The infotainment is also very easy to use. It's probably Ford's best interface in history. It uses the Unreal Engine to give you some pretty cool animations and very quick touch response. So it all just feels very seamless and easy to use. Now you and I could talk ad nauseum about the lack of vintage styling cues in here, but beyond that, this is still an excellent place to spend time, whether you're pushing it hard on the canyons or just kind of cruising down the freeway. Now, beyond all the technological gugas and credible back road performance, the Mustang GT is a pretty decent daily driver as well, especially if you get the optional Magna Ride dampers that come as a plus up to the performance package. Go that route and you get a commendably smooth ride. What's more, you also get adaptive cruise control, even if you go for the manual transmission. You also get lane keep assist and a bunch of other technology to help reduce some of the workload while you're driving, making it just a little bit easier to deal with the daily slog. It all kind of boils down one way. The Mustang has always had kind of this borderline personality between the raw unvarnished muscle of the Dodge Challenger and a more sporting car like a BMW M4. And I really think that the new five liter kind of straddles that line very well. It's not nearly as dialed in or exotic or exciting to drive as an M4, but at the same time, it gives you a lot more driver involvement than you get in something like a Challenger Hellcat. It's just a really enjoyable car to drive quickly, and I totally understand why the Mustang is the most popular four-seat sports car in history. Now, as much fun as I've had talking to you about the Mustang GT convertible, I've got a six-speed manual transmission V8 at my disposal, so I'm gonna drop the top and go have some fun. Thanks for watching.